Volkswagen has added further to its already extensive lineup of compact SUVs with this trendier looking model, the Tygo. This car shares much with both the Polo Super Mini and the brand's existing entrant in the compact crossover class, the T-Cross, but brings a more avant-garde vibe that will appeal more to the segment's fashionistas. And of course, with it, yet all the usual reassuring Volkswagen attributes of quality and sound engineering. These days, we're all wanting our SUVs with a bit more pizzazz, even the smaller ones. It's no longer enough for an aspiring brand to simply offer small, medium and large crossovers. There need to be some more fashionable options too, especially at the affordable end of the market, which is why we've now got cars like this one, Volkswagen's Tygo. Even given that requirement, you might reasonably question whether the Wolfsburg brand really needs yet another SUV. After all, it already has five, the smaller T-Cross and the larger T-Rock, Tiguan, Tiguan Allspace and Touareg models. Or nine, if as Volkswagen does, you also count the Caddy Panamericana, the Golf Alltrack and the all-electric ID4 and ID5 twins. The global car market is indeed consumed by the crossover vibe. Appropriate then that this Tygo is very much a global product. It was originally introduced in South America, badged as the Nevis. For our continent, it's being built in Pamplona in Spain and is being positioned as a trendier, more coupe-like alternative to the Polo Super Mini based T-Cross, with which all the engineering here is shared. Trendier coupe-like versions of small SUVs have sold well over the last few years, which is why, for instance, Toyota offers the CHR, as well as the more sensible Yaris Cross. Ford introduced the Puma alongside the Squara EcoSport, and Vauxhall offers the Mocha, as well as the boxier Crossland. It's the kind of fashion orientated market that back at the turn of the century was being served by conventional small coupes like the Ford Puma, the Honda CRX and the Vauxhall Tigra. Now though, people want their small coupes to have a crossover theme, which should mean that they'll like this one. It shares all the virtues you'd get from the latest versions of its Polo and T-Cross donor models, but it'll make much more of an impact down at the gym. Is there though really room for this Tygo in Volkswagen's overcrowded SUV lineup? And is it practical enough for you to consider if you were previously looking at a more sensibly styled small SUV? Both good questions. You'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road tests, to answer them. Small fashion-led SUVs like this one need not dazzle dynamically, but it's always quite refreshing when they do. Sadly, that doesn't happen very often, and it hasn't here. But there are some things about the way this Tygo drives that you might really like. One of them is predictable, a supple, assured quality of ride delivered here because the car uses the same suspension and MQB A0 chassis as Volkswagen's Polo and T-Cross models, both notable for the manner in which they smooth off the rough edges of the typical suburban British back road. Here, progress isn't quite as seamless as in a Polo, but the car still deals well with tarmac tears and expertly handles higher speed undulations. Many competitor brands are going to want to know how a straightforward McPherson strut front and torsion beam rear setup can deliver damping this good. Even larger wheel sizes don't seem to upset it too much. More surprising though is the way this Tygo steers, its helm pretty much a match for that of the involving Ford Puma in the way it communicates the road surface back to you, which in some respects feels a little strange because there's otherwise nothing very Puma-like about the way this car handles. It goes about its business in a safe and measured way, but there's no real spark of agility and nothing to suggest the need for any future fast version. Here, the priorities lie elsewhere, as do the expectations of likely customers, which is partly why, to propel this car, almost all of them will choose the little three-cylinder, one-litre TSI engine we're trying here. 
There simply isn't much need for anything heavier or more powerful, though if you disagree, a minority interest 1.5 litre TSI four-cylinder unit sits at the top of the range. The one litre power plant, which these days seems to be fitted to just about every affordable car the Volkswagen Group makes, is as usual a pleasantly fizzy little lump, though its eagerness will be somewhat swamped with weight and responsibility if, as is the case here, you pair it with the available seven-speed DSG Auto gearbox, which is as ponderous in its ratio changes as this transmission usually is. With three-cylinder power, that auto option comes only with the uprated 110 PS version of this engine, which, when alternatively paired with a six-speed manual stick shift, manages 62 miles an hour from rest in 10.4 seconds, en route to 119 miles an hour. With base trim, Volkswagen also offers a detuned 95 PS version of this unit. But with that, you can only have a five-speed manual gearbox, which doesn't help refinement on highway trips. Still, that entry-level lump isn't much slower if you're quick with the changes, making 62 miles an hour in 11.1 seconds on the way to 114 miles an hour. We mentioned the alternative 1.5-litre TSI engine, which offers 150 PS. It's petrol-powered, of course. Even Volkswagen, wedded though it is to TDI territory, doesn't think it can sell a diesel to small SUV segment customers in our market, though it once tried to in the T-Cross. With the top four-cylinder power plant, there's about 25% more pulling power through gears that have to be shifted by that DSG Auto, so it'll be the favoured choice for the few folk who'll regularly want to use their Tigos for longer journeys. The 62 mile an hour sprint with this variant occupies 8.3 seconds en route to 132 miles an hour, the kind of top speed that'll soon be a distant memory as we move into an era of EVs largely limited to double digit velocities and an era of autonomous drive technology. If you're not expecting to find much of that in a car of this size, you'll be pleasantly surprised here because Volkswagen has decided that all Tigos for our market should be fitted with its IQ Drive Travel Assist system as seen on the brand's larger models. It's a setup capable of taking over the steering, braking and acceleration of this car at speed starting from 19 miles an hour with a manual gearbox or zero miles an hour if you've specified the DSG Auto. The Travel Assist setup then working in either case right up to the car's maximum speed. That's providing the driver keeps their hands on the capacitive steering wheel which includes this Travel Assist button to activate the system. To achieve its supporting role, the Travel Assist system relies on two key features, Lane Assist for lateral guidance and Adaptive Cruise Control for longitudinal guidance. So Volkswagen has had to include these as standard too. The Adaptive Cruise Control system incorporates the brand's predictive ACC tech, which uses the signals from the front-facing camera, as well as relevant GPS and map data, to slow or speed the car. If your Tygo has sat-nav and DSG auto transmission fitted, the predictive ACC setup's even cleverer, working together with the gearbox and the navigation system to proactively take into account local speed limit information, town boundary signs, junctions and roundabouts. Enough with drive tech and engines, what else do you need to know here? Well, earlier we mentioned this car's ambivalence to being thrown about, but if you're determined to, you'll want to stretch up to the top R-line trim level. This gives you an XDS differential lock for extra cornering traction and driving profile selection, which provides a choice of drive modes that alter throttle response and steering feel. Not ride quality though, Volkswagen doesn't think that an adaptive damping option's merited here. Folk determined to drive their Tigos hard will also be pleased to find that automatic models provide shift paddles behind the steering wheel, a feature that just about everyone else will ignore. More useful is the technology on offer here. Like the Park Assist system, standard across the range, which will automatically steer the car into your favoured perpendicular or parallel space outside the gym. And the clever IQ Light LED matrix headlamps, standard above base trim, 
which have distinct lighting modes for different driving situations like poor weather or motorway travel. There's even a function that avoids you being dazzled by the reflection from road signs. As we said at the beginning, you won't be dazzled by the immersive feel of the driving experience on offer here, but if you're a typical Tygo trendsetter, then you probably won't want to be. What you'll want instead is a car that's very Volkswagen, and that's just what you get. Back in 1986, two brothers, Marco Pavoni and Jose Carlos Pavoni, submitted their applications to work for Volkswagen Design, together with their first styling sketches for future cars. Today, Marco is head of design globally for the Volkswagen brand, while Jose Carlos heads up design for the company's South America region. Not surprisingly, the two work closely together, and never more so than with this car penned by Jose Carlos and launched in Brazil in 2020, badged as the Nevis, a model which Marco then cleared for introduction into Europe a year later with the name used for our market, the Tygo. Volkswagen calls this an SUV coupe, and you'd get that if you placed one alongside its boxy T-Cross showroom stablemate. Otherwise, though, despite the rake back roofline, there's not much about the chunky silhouette that really shouts coupe. Volkswagen calls it sporty, rugged, urban and robust. Perhaps. The styling certainly neat, apparently inspired by larger coupe SUVs with a rising window line towards the rear, a forward sloping C pillar and the option of a contrast colour black roof. It's all a world away from the Polo Supermini that donates everything under the skin, though it does share that car's so-called Tornado line, a three-dimensional arrow-shaped double crease that flows from the front wheel arch to the tail light. Roof rails, silver-trimmed black side sills and black plastic-clad arches with big wheels of between 16 and 18 inches are supposed to add the necessary crossover vibe. We've got 17-inch Tokyo diamond-cut rims here. It's distinctive at the front, where the LED headlights are framed by daytime running light strips. Upper trim levels feature these beams with the brand's IQ light matrix tech, designated by an illuminated radiator grill crossbar. The bonnet has muscular contours and this wide lower intake is flanked by fog lamps, emphasised on sporty R-line models by wider corner cutouts. Like other recent Volkswagen designs, there's a continuous light strip at the rear linking the narrow LED clusters. But beyond the trinketry, some clever designs in evidence, this raked back tailgate glass section is compensated for with subtly extended rear overhangs that culminate in this neat bumper with thin reflectors and this token lower faux skid plate. As usual, of course, what's more important is what you can't see, namely the stiff, light and sophisticated MQB A0 modular architecture platform this Tygo sits upon, underpinning shared with all the Volkswagen Group's current smaller cars. Right, time to take a look inside. Now, cabin finish is often what sells Volkswagen models in the showroom, but we weren't particularly sold on the interior of this model's T-Cross close cousin when we first tried it back in 2019. So, is there an improvement here? Well, yes, though the architecture here is essentially just as it is in the T-Cross. Crucially, though, the Tygo benefits from the upgrade to this cabin design that featured on the improved version of the Mark VI Polo we tried recently, which is a decent step forward with its soft-touch dash top and smarter leather-stitched capacitive steering wheel. If, like quite a few people, you really don't get on with the rather futuristic operating system these days found in a Golf, then this cabin might suit you perfectly. It gets a lot of the same tech, an instrument screen paired with a decently sized centre monitor close by, over-the-air updates, eSIM connectivity and so on, but without the awkward interfaces, silly volume sliders and climate controls buried away in submenus. Here, your ventilation controls are, as they should be, properly separated out on the centre stack, with access via this freshly designed, touch-sensitive, climatronic panel, if you avoid base trim. 
We should mention that you don't have to have your Tygo's cabin trimmed like this. The bright visual green decorative inlays that feature on the instrument panel and the door cards of this test car come as part of an option pack only extroverts will want. And extroverts don't often tend to choose Volkswagens. This one's charms are very much of the Teutonic rather than the trendy kind. The solidity of the various fixtures and fittings, the exemplary ergonomics and the supportive seats which feature standard lumbar support. You'll find yourself sitting a little higher than you would in a polo, but the positioning isn't in any way SUV-like or commanding, which once was the part of the whole point of choosing a crossover as your next car. Still, across the range, there are equipment items you might have expected not to find on affordable variants of a model like this. Things like a wireless charging mat, ambient lighting, and also dimming rear view mirror and an auto parking system that steers you into spaces. Volkswagen charges more for its cars these days, but at least it's got a bit more generous when it comes to standard kit. The standardisation of instrument screen technology is another example of that. At minimum, as with the Polo, you get an 8-inch digital cockpit binnacle display. But most customers are going to end up with this 10.25-inch digital cockpit pro screen that's fitted above entry-level trim and makes much better use of the available space. Using this steering wheel view button, you can switch it between three different graphic layouts. Here, we've got the one with a pair of virtual dials featuring center panels you can customize using the center dash monitor. Between these gauges is a panel which can show either navigation, audio preferences, phone settings, vehicle status info, driving data, or assist systems. Whichever of these you select, you can choose to display it more prominently by using that wheel spoke view button to switch to one of the two other screen layout options, which switch to a digital speedo as part of a more wide ranging screen design. Just about anything else you might need to know is covered off by this centre monitor. Again, entry level trim restricts you to a smaller size, the life spec model featuring a six and a half inch display. Above that, you'll get the eight inch Discover Media setup we have here, which is big enough to include built in navigation. The smart glass fronted design is clear, logical and easy to navigate. Plus the welcome and goodbye animations are helpful. It's a pity though that it doesn't include streaming and internet access. For that, you have to pay extra for the 9.2 inch Discover Pro setup. This upgrade also gets you voice activation, but it's still nothing like as good as the intuitive Hey Volkswagen voice control system you'd find in a Golf. All sizes of monitor incorporate the brand's app connect system for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. And there's the tempting option of a 300 watt eight channel Beats sound system upgrade. What else might you need to know? Well, anything pretending to be a coupe usually comes with the drawback of restricted rear three quarter vision. And to some extent, that's true here, thanks to the small rear window. And it's disappointing that even top spec trim doesn't come with a standard rear view camera. Fortunately, though, you don't really need it thanks to generous side glazing, all round parking sensors, side assist, blind spot monitoring and that auto parking system we mentioned. Build quality seems to be reasonable, though you may object to the rather wide array of hard, brittle plastics on display if you happen to be buying in further up the range. Having them in this test cars in practically lighter colour only emphasises the issue. At least build quality from the Spanish factory seems decent. As for in-cabin storage, well, not much is lacking. The door pockets and glove box are of a reasonable size and there's a useful drawer beneath the front passenger seat. The usual storage area in front of the gear stick has a wireless charging mat and twin USB slots, though they're of the USB-C variety, so you'll probably need an unsightly converter cable. Next to the conventional handbrake that Volkswagen still persists with in all its smaller cars are twin cup holders with a deep, tall storage box just behind. There's a ticket clip on the driver's sun visor, a credit card slot in front of the gear lever, and the brand has remembered to include an overhead compartment for your sunglasses. Okay, 
Time to take a look in the back. Now, you might justify the extra expenditure required in choosing a Tygo rather than a T-Cross or a Polo with hope that things might be a little more spacious in the rear. The body length increase here promises that a Tygo is 161 millimetres longer than a T-Cross and 197 millimetres longer than a Polo. But unfortunately, there's no more space between the axles here. The Tygo's 4,226 millimetre wheelbase being hardly any different from that of its two showroom stable mates. Which means that once you get inside, room for your knees and legs is as restricted as it would usually be in any super mini model. Two medium sized adults will cope okay for short to medium trips, but lankier folk are going to need some cooperation from those up front to get anything like comfortable. If that's an issue, paying only fractionally more for a T Rock, the next SUV up in Volkswagen's lineup, would be sensible. Given this Tygo's coupe pretensions, we are impressed with the headroom though. The design decision not to pursue a particularly rakish roof line pays off here. There's also quite an airy feel thanks to these rear quarter light windows, something you could improve by spending quite a lot extra on the optional panoramic glass roof your dealer will want you to consider, though that might compromise headroom a bit. The seat base and backrest don't slide or recline as they would in the Volkswagen Tiguan model that might not cost you all that much more and would certainly feel less squash than this if you happen to be transporting a car full. It's never wise to try and fit three adults in the back of a small hatch and that's particularly difficult here thanks to the kind of rather prominent centre transmission tunnel you'd think a front-driven car might not need. Just above it are twin USB-C ports and you're looked after with deep door bins and seat back pockets along with individual overhead reading lights and coat hooks on the B pillars. Let's finish with a look in the boot. Now you have to lift the hatch yourself. Even the priciest Tygo can't be had with powered tailgate assistance. And once it's raised, you'll find a usefully shaped 351 litre space. That's the same as a Polo. But thanks to the swept back roof line, just over 100 litres less than you'd get in the boxier T-Cross. Still, this 440 litres, if you load up to the ceiling and the tailgate glass, and six carry-on suitcases will just about fit. Plus, you can make good use of what's on offer thanks to this adjustable height cargo floor, beneath which you'll have plenty more room if you're unwise enough to do without the optional space save a spare wheel. There are bag hooks and a recess on the left so that wide items like push chairs or buggies can more easily fit in width-wise. The rear backrest splits conventionally 60-40, would have much preferred the more flexible 40-20-40 split you get in this segment on a Mini Countryman. But once everything's almost flat, up to 1,125 litres of room can be freed up. So what's the price of fashion? Well, give or take a few pounds, you're looking at needing around a thousand pounds more to get a Tygo rather than a comparable version of Volkswagen's T-Cross. Think around 1,250 pounds more if you're comparing against a Polo. At the time of this test in summer 2022, that meant Tygo prices starting from just over 23,000 pounds for base life trim. It's quite a big jump of around three and a half thousand pounds to this test car's mid-level style spec and if you want the top r-line version at the time of this test your volkswagen dealer would have been asking you for a spend in the 28 to 30 thousand pound bracket quite a lot for a car that in brazil is seen very much as the brand's entry-level suv here it's a little different Volkswagen wants to position the Tygo at the upper end of the pricing segment for small SUVs that see themselves as coupe-like and sporty. But that might mean spending a little more than you may have expected to in order to get the exact trim, engine and transmission combination you want. Predictably, it's an all-petrol lineup, and most customers choose the more powerful 110 PS version of the volume three-cylinder, one-litre TSI engine. Only base life trim allows you to save just over £800 and get this unit in feebler 95 PS spec. 
Across the range with the 1 litre TSI 110 PS power plants, you'll be offered the option of spending around £1,600 more to get Volkswagen's usual 7-speed DSG automatic transmission. We've been trying that here. You have to have that gearbox if you want the top engine in the range, the four-cylinder, one-and-a-half-litre, 150 PS TSI unit, but that only comes with the two upper trim levels and at quite a price tag. At the time of this test, around £30,000. If you're looking at finance, to give you an idea, we'll tell you that at the time of our test, a typical style spec one-litre TSI 110 PS Tygo could be yours for £420 a month on a PCP scheme based on a £500 contribution from Volkswagen and a 5.6% APR. That's based on a 36-month deal with a £4,600 deposit and 10,000 miles a year. So where does that all leave this car's value proposition in comparison to its most obvious rivals? Well, it'll help Volkswagen that all small SUVs have jumped up in price over the last couple of years. Even the least expensive Nissan Juke, for instance, was requiring a budget of nearly £21,000 at the time of this test. As we filmed this Volkswagen, around £24,000 was a typical starting point for Tygo ownership. That's the sum required for the base-trimmed 1-litre TSI 110 PS variant That'll probably be the best seller. There are, of course, any number of small crossovers you could have for this kind of money, but most of those are boxier models, more directly targeted by Volkswagen's more sensibly shaped T-Cross. So if that's more your thing, switch to our film on that car. The fashion crowd this Tygo is targeted at are more likely to be looking at slightly more rakishly designed contenders. Vauxhall's Mocha and Ford's Puma, for instance, both of which, as we filmed, were retailing at prices which, in comparable form, would see them costing only around £500 less than a Tygo. It's worth pointing out, though, that once you start looking at this Volkswagen with its two plusher trim levels, you'll find yourself needing to spend the kind of money that would get you a slightly larger coupe crossover like Renault's Arcana, priced from around £26,500, as we filmed. Or for a similar spend to that needed for a top Tygo, you could have the greater efficiency of a full hybrid Toyota CHR, which has standard auto transmission and was priced from around £28,500 at the time of filming. All food for thought. If, having given appropriate consideration to all of these alternative options, you decide that it is this Volkswagen that you really want, then you're going to want to know just how generous the brand has been with standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. Starting with that base life trim we mentioned, it's good to know that you can get a life at your Volkswagen dealer. Do that and your Tago will come with most of the stuff you'd want. LED headlights and tail lamps, 16-inch Everett black alloy wheels, front fog lights and black finished roof rails supply a smart look. And there's also power folding heated mirrors, heat insulating glass, also headlamps and wipers, honeycomb textured puddle lights, an alarm and a decent portfolio of camera safety kit, which we'll cover off for you in a moment. There's even a park assist system able to automatically steer the car into spaces for you. But the feature Volkswagen's keenest to talk about is IQ Drive Travel Assist, which comes with adaptive cruise control. Travel Assist facilitates level two automated driving at speeds up to 130 miles an hour. And the system is capable of taking over the steering, braking and acceleration of your Tygo at speed starting from zero miles an hour with the DSG auto gearbox or 19 miles an hour with a manual gearbox and going up to the car's maximum speed. The driver activates the system by pressing a separate Travel Assist button on the multifunction steering wheel. Inside, with life trim, there's an 8-inch digital cockpit screen to replace conventional dials. Plus, you get manually controlled air conditioning, a leather-stitched wheel, a front centre armrest, an auto-dimming rear-view mirror, front seat lumbar support, ambient lighting and a wireless charging mat. Media connectivity is taken care of by a 6.5-inch composition media centre screen, your access point to a six-speaker DAB tuner, Bluetooth and Volkswagen's wireless App Connect system, which gives you Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. So, that's covered base spec. What if you've a little more to spend on this car? Well, if so, as mentioned earlier, there are two choices, both priced quite comparably 
luxury orientated style, which is what we have here, and sportier looking R-Line. Both get IQ light LED matrix headlights and LED fog lights, rear privacy glass, an air care climatronic two zone air conditioning system and heated front seats. Plus much higher standard of media tech, including an upgraded Discover Media infotainment system with a larger eight inch sensor display featuring built in navigation and a larger 10.25 inch digital cockpit pro instrument screen with customizable menus. In terms of the differentiation points between these two top trim levels, well, the style spec comes with 17-inch black Aberdeen diamond-turned alloy wheels, silver roof rails, style fabric upholstery, sports comfort front seats and interior surround lighting. With our line trim, your Tiger will come with a sporty look, courtesy of 17-inch Galvano grey wheels, special R-Line bumpers and a high-gloss black diffuser with chrome-look integrated exhaust panels in the lower part of the rear bumper. Inside, our line spec gets you a driving profile selection system with drive modes and an XDS differential lock, which will aid cornering traction. Cabin R-Line embellishments include Corozo fabric, Art Valeurs upholstery, brushed stainless steel pedals, branded door sill protectors, grey anodised matte decorative cabin inserts and a sporty black roof lining. Whatever kind of Tygo flavour you ultimately decide upon, you'll benefit from Volkswagen's We Connect Plus app, which will allow you to interact with your car via your smartphone when you're away from it. You'll be able to do things like lock or unlock the doors, remotely activate the horn and indicators, get a vehicle status report, set the cabin ventilation so the car is cool or warm when you reach it, and locate your Tygo if you've forgotten where you parked it. WeConnect Plus Media Services also delivers online access to a range of useful information such as traffic reports, petrol station locations and parking spots. And if your Tygo has sat-nav fitted, WeConnect Plus can allow you to integrate online traffic information into route guidance and transfer online points of interest to the navigation system. What about options across the range? Well, your dealer will probably ask you to consider the tilting and sliding panoramic sunroof and the 300 watt eight channel Beats sound system upgrade, which comes with a space saver spare wheel. You might also want to look at keyless entry, heated front seats and a rear view camera. If you're limited to base life trim, you can individually add in some of the features from the two upper spec models like the Air Care Climatronic Air Conditioning System, heated front seats, rear tinted glass and the wider 10.25 inch digital cockpit pro instrument screen. On a life model, the bigger 8 inch Discover Media Central infotainment screen with built in navigation is optional too. But if you don't go for that, but later discover you want integrated GPS, you can retrofit navigation into the standard infotainment monitor. All Tygos can also be fitted with Volkswagen's largest 9.2 inch Discover Pro center infotainment screen, which comes with voice activation, streaming, and internet access. If you've avoided base trim, you'll have more personalization options, primarily the black roof and mirror housing pack, which coats those areas in contrasting black. Plus, you can add streaming and internet access to the Discover Pro Center infotainment screen. Style spec models can also be optioned up with the driving profile selection system and art velour upholstery. As for practical features across the range, well, we can't imagine too many Tygo folk will want a tow bar, but you can add one if you need it. You can also add a fabric or rubber carpet mats, protective film for the door sills and tailgate, a protection pack, mud flaps, a dash cam, and the lateral roof bars that will enable you to add a roof box or a bicycle carrier. For the cargo area, there's a variable double floor boot inlay, a boot tray, a luggage net and protection for the loading sill. What about aesthetics? Well, there are various 17 and 18 inch wheel options. We've got one of those here, 17 inch Tokyo black diamond cut rims. As for paint, well, unless you want your Tygo finished in the only no cost colour, a rather dour solid Ascot grey, then you'll need to pay Volkswagen extra, even appallingly if you simply want your car finished in solid white. 
it's more likely that you're going to want one of the metallic shades, which costs just over £600 more. A specific one for the Tygo is the eye-catching visual green metallic finish of this test car. And if you opt for that, your dealer will suggest that you also add the complimentary visual green design pack we have here, which includes visual green decorative inlays for the instrument panel and the door cards, plus green stitched upholstery. On to safety, an area where Volkswagen have matched and possibly even exceeded the highest class standards. Standard on all Tygos is a front assist system that on the open road scans the road ahead as you drive for potential accident hazards, warning you if one is detected and automatically braking if necessary. You get that same kind of functionality at urban speeds too as part of a city emergency braking system included as part of the front assist package. This setup also includes predictive pedestrian protection that specifically searches for pedestrians who might be about to step out in front of you and if necessary can initiate braking to avoid them. All Tygos also get lane assist, which alerts you if you drift out of lane. And in addition, across the range, the Wolfsburg brand has installed a clever automatic post-collision braking system that automatically brakes the car down to six miles an hour after a collision. So if, say, someone hits you and understandably you go to pieces, the car will automatically sort itself out. We also applaud the standard fitment of a driver alert system that monitors your reactions for drowsiness, prompting you to stop for a restorative coffee if lethargy is detected. Plus, it's worth mentioning that all Tygos fitted with navigation get traffic sign recognition, which pictures speed signs as you pass and displays them on the centre dash screen. Helping to justify this Tygo's price premium over a Polo Super Mini is the fact that the driver's assistant pack that would be optional on a Polo is standard on all Tygo's. This gets you the park assist feature we mentioned earlier, plus several other features you might expect to normally have to pay extra for on a car of this kind. The first of these is what Volkswagen now calls lane change system side assist, basically a blind spot monitor which alerts you if you're about to dangerously pull out to overtake when there's a car in your blind spot. The other safety feature in this pack is the brand's pre-crash preventative occupant protection system. This senses when an impact is imminent, then braces the car to better withstand it by instantly closing the windows. The usual passive safety features are fitted as well, of course. There are twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus also a clever centre airbag located on the edge of the backrest on the driver's side. In the event of a crash, this centre airbag deploys towards the middle of the vehicle and protects the driver and front seat passenger from colliding with each other and possibly injuring themselves. Another new safety element added here is the lap belt tensioners, which additionally tension the lower part of the seatbelt. And of course, all the usual passive safety features come included. Isofix child seat fastenings, a tyre pressure monitoring system and anti-whiplash front head restraints. On top of this, there are the usual electronic systems to try and ensure that neither of these features will ever be needed. That means ESC, stability control, and an ASR, traction control system. There's ABS braking, of course. A hill hold assist feature stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. And panic stops will be advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning lights. Volkswagen seems to have little interest in adding its electrified technology to its smallest cars. You'd have thought that the E-TSI mild hybrid tech that you get in a Golf would have made its way down the range by now, though it's possible to argue that there's little need for it when the core three-cylinder, one-litre TSI petrol engine that so many of the company's most compact products use is so efficient. To illustrate the point, we'll tell you that the Tygo variant that most customers are expected to choose, the 1 litre TSI 110 PS manual version, manages 52.3 mpg on the combined cycle and 123 grams per kilometre of CO2. A rival Ford Puma 1 litre EcoBoost needs a mild hybrid system to produce returns that are pretty much identical. 
The slightly feebler 95 PS version of the 1 litre Tygo manages the same CO2 reading and a 51.4 MPG combined fuel return. Identical stats to those of another rival, Vauxhall's Mocha, in 1.2 litre, 130 horsepower form. Adding in DSG auto transmission obviously hits the readings a little. That auto box paired to the 1 litre TSI 110 PS engine, which is what we have here, means returns of 47.9 mpg and 133 grams per kilometre of CO2. The latter figure pushing the car up two benefiting kind taxation bands, so you'll be paying 31% rather than 29%. You might expect the significantly heavier and more powerful 150 PS 1.5 litre four-cylinder TSI petrol unit, which only comes as an auto, to be much pricier to run than that. Actually though, the readings there are almost the same, 46.3 mpg and 138 grams per kilometre of CO2, with a BIK rate of 32%. That's because the 1.5 TSI power plant benefits from a cylinder deactivation system that takes out two of the cylinders at medium to low throttle loads, so that a lot of the time in suburban travel with the top variant, we'll actually be driving a two-cylinder Tiger. The other cost-related facts surrounding this Volkswagen are pretty straightforward. You can expect some of the highest residuals available in the class and reasonable insurance groupings too. Go for the 1 litre TSI unit in 95 PS form and you're looking at Group 13E. For reference, four groups higher than the rating this engine attracts in Apollo. It's Group 14E to 15E if you choose the 110 PS version of that unit. The 1.5 TSI engine is rated at Group 22E. As for servicing, well, as usual with Volkswagen models, there's a choice of either fixed or flexible maintenance packages. You'll choose the fixed approach if you cover less than 10,000 miles a year, and with this, the car will typically be looked at every 12 months. If your daily commute is more than 25 miles and your Tygo will regularly be driven on longer distance journeys, you'll be able to work with a flexible regime that in the first two years of ownership could see you travelling up to 20,000 miles or waiting up to 24 months before a garage visit. A single inspection service every year or 20,000 miles will be required thereafter, whichever comes sooner. And warranties? Well, the standard package is three years and 60,000 miles. We can't see why Volkswagen couldn't extend that mileage limit to 100,000, since that's what you get on its mechanically very similar Caddy model. Doing that, though, wouldn't give Volkswagen dealers so much of an opportunity to sell extended warranty packages. There's one for four years and 75,000 miles, or if you plan to see a bit more of the world in your Tygo, there's a five-year 90,000 mile package. Whatever your decision, your car will come with three years of pan-European roadside assistance that has no mileage restriction. The paintwork warranty lasts for three years and, as you'd expect, this small SUV is protected by a 12-year anti-corrosion package. You wouldn't have thought there was room for yet another small SUV in Volkswagen's range, but the Wolfsburg brand has found space for the Tygo anyway. It's difficult not to think that it will merely sell to folk who would otherwise have bought a T-Rock or an upper spec T-Cross. That's one perspective. The other is that the T-Cross looks a little frumpy compared to some avant-garde rivals like Vauxhall's Mocha and Ford's Puma which meant prior to this car's introduction that some people not prepared to move up to the slightly larger T-Roc had been dismissing the Volkswagen brand in the small SUV segment. The Tygo will put this issue right. Perhaps too effectively. After all, it's certainly difficult to see why you'd choose a mid to high spec T-Cross when you could have this trendier Tygo instead for only slightly more. But that assumes you're wedded to the idea of having a Volkswagen in this segment. Many browsing customers, of course, won't be. They simply want a stylish, well-equipped quality option when it comes to a car of this kind. With this model in the range, the Wolfsburg maker thinks it's better able to offer that. They could well be right. 
Not everything here is quite as appealing as Volkswagen thinks it is. The price, obviously, twenty-five to thirty thousand pounds for a super mini-based SUV, is pushing the upper limits of what most people are prepared to pay for a crossover of this size. Particularly one with a few elements of cabin trim, not quite in keeping with that kind of price positioning. Overall, though, the Tygo will probably make the sales numbers the Wolfsburg brand is targeting here. It rides well, steers sharply, is as efficient as it needs to be, and comes with a range of big car features you might not expect from a model of this size. And yes, it manages to be roomy as well as rakish, which is a trick that more conventional small coupes never used to be able to pull off. This one is more a car of its moment, and it could be just what you're looking for. If it isn't, though, and you want a Volkswagen SUV, then don't worry, we're sure there'll be another one along in a minute.